All righty. So now we are looking at dividing a decimal to the hundredths place by a decimal to in the hundredths place using area models. So let's look at this problem. All right, whenever we have a word problem, the first thing we're going to do is see what we know and what the question is asking. Christy is making apple cider. She bought all the apples she wants for $4.34. So the apples cost $4.34. The apples cost 28 cents per pound. So every pound of apple costs 28 cents. How many pounds of apples did she buy? All right, let's figure out. So what do we want to know? We want to know how many pounds of apples did she buy? Hmm, how can we figure this out? Well, let's see, all the apples she bought are $4.34. Okay, we don't know how many pounds she bought, but we know that each pound is 28 cents. So this pound would be 28 cents. This pound would be 28 cents. This pound would be 28 cents. Hey, we are equally separating or equally dividing them the $4.34. That is division. Anytime you separate something into equal groups we are dividing so we know the groups are all 28 cents big we don't know how many groups how many pounds of 28 cents that is so this problem will be what is being divided what is being cut remember you can't always do big number divided by small number four dollars and 34 cents is being cut and what is the size of the groups it's being cut into? It's being cut into 28 cent groups. All right. Now we talked about before, because all the division problems are secret fractions, if you multiply both sides of a problem by 10, or both numbers in a division problem by 10, you will get the same answer, even if you didn't do that, right? And right now, I have, I the number that is doing the dividing has two decimal places. I could do this problem, but I don't want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both numbers by 10, okay? So $4.34 times 10, every digit moves up one place value. So 4 goes into the tens place and becomes 40. 3 goes into the ones place, or 3 tenths goes into the ones place and becomes 3. And 4 hundredths goes into the tenths place and becomes 4. And we're dividing that by 2 tenths goes into the ones place and becomes 2. And then 8 hundredths goes into the ones place and becomes 8 tenths. All right, it's looking a little better. I still don't want to do this problem because the number that is doing the devising, dividing still has a decimal. So let me multiply it by 10 one more time. Every digit goes one digit. One Every place value goes one place value bigger. All right, so I have 40 is going to go to the hundredths place and become 400. Third, three is going to go to the tens place and become 30. Four is tenths is going to go to the ones place and become four. Put my division sign back up. Two is going to go to the tens place and become 20. And eight tenths is going to be go to the ones place and become eight. So, as a reminder, that is you do not have to do, but it means also as a reminder, when you have to multiply the other number by, or this does not work. You can't just magically take away decimals. But after doing that whole thing, we have 434 divided by 28. 434 divided by 28. Now there are lots of ways to do this problem. I am going to do it using area model. So I'm gonna start by drawing my lovely rectangle. When we are using area model, we are trying to figure out what is the space inside the rectangle. And we can figure that out by multiplying length, the long side times width, the short side. Well, the area, the space in between is what is being cut up, right? Because when you multiply things and then you try to figure out what you've multiplied, that is dividing. So I'm gonna put 430. Four 
inside my box because that is what is being cut up. That is what is being divided. And 28, it is what is doing the dividing. So we don't know how many equal groups it's being divided into. That is what we are trying whoops, to figure out. So let us begin. The first thing we usually start with is multiplying 28 by different numbers to get as close as possible without going over. So let me start off. Okay, so I know if I multiply it by one, that's gonna give me 28, that's pretty small. If I multiply it by 10, that'll give me 280. We're getting closer. If I multiply it by 100, that would give me 2,800. That's way too big. So let me multiply it by multiples of 10. All right, 28 times 10 is 280. 28 times 20. 8 times 2 is 16. Two and then two times twenty is forty. But all these are too many, so we're going to add zeros. So that would be 560. Whoa, we're already too big. <laughs> so it looks like 28 times 10 is as close as we're going to get in the tens place without going over. So did I get to 434? Of course not. So not everybody does this. But I like to move the number down so I know what I'm working with. I put, I'm going to, cross this out to remind us that we're not using it. I'm going to put 280 because we know that this part of the rectangle's area is 280. Well, and that 28 times 10 is that 280. So now I need to know what this part of the rectangle is because I don't just want to know the length of this part. I also want to know the length of this part. Okay, well to figure that out, I know the area of the whole thing is 434. And the area of this part is 280. So I'm going to take away 280 to see what we have left over right here. 4 minus 0 is 4. I can't do 3 minus 8 or 30 minus 80 without getting a negative number. So I'm going to regroup. I'm going to change this 400 to 3, this 434 to 300 plus. 130 plus 4. Okay, well now I could do 13 minus 8, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is 5. And I have 154 left over. Okay, well now I need to multiply 21 by something to get as close as possible to 124 without going over. So let's multiply 28 by my 1s now. All right, 28 times 1 is 28. 28 times 2, 8 times 2 is 16. 2 times 20 is 40. That's going to be 56. 28 times 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 3 times 20 is 60. That's 84. All right. 28 times 4. 8 times 4 is 32. 4 times 20 is 80. 2 plus 0 is 2, 8, 9, 10, 11, that's 112. Okay, we're getting closer. 28 times 5, 8 times 5 is 40. 5 times 20 is 100. 
So we're getting 140. Oh my goodness, we're so close. 28 times 6. 6 times 8 is 48. 6 times 20 is 120. 8 plus 0 is 8. 4 plus 2 is 6. 168. Whoa, we got too big. Across this out to help me remember that that was too big. So, what was the closest I could get to 154 without going over? Well, it was 140. So, in the question mark, I should have put 154. <laughs> I forgot to do that earlier. But I'm going to now put 140 because that was as close as we could get without going over. And I'm going to put, because that was 28 is the length so the width was going to be five because if i multiply 28 times five i'll get this area of 140. okay well now i want to see what is the area of this little section right here all right so let me see 140 take away that because we know this whole little area is 154. so if i take 140 away from that four minus zero is four five minus four is one i have 14. all right so i'm going to multiply 28 by something to get as close as possible to 14 without going over. Well, I multiply 28 by tens. I multiply 28 by ones. Now it's time to multiply 28 by tenths. All right. We're going to start off with one tenth times 28 is eight times one is eight. Two times one is two, and we have one decimal. Two and eight tenths. Okay. Now let's try 28 times two tenths. Eight times two is 16. Two times 20 is 40. That gives me 56, but we have a decimal. So I'm going to put one decimal place. Okay, five and six tenths. That's pretty far away from 14. I'm going to try to get a little bigger. I could keep going in order, but I'm going to try to get a little bigger to see if that gives me closer. 28 times 5 tenths. 8 times 5 is 40. 5 times 20 is 100. 0 plus 0 is 0. 4 plus 0 is 4. 1 plus 0 is 1. And I have one decimal spot. Oh! <gasps> Wow, that was right on the nose, 14. 28 times 5 tenths is 14. So let me put 14 right here. I'm going to put 5 tenths right here. And of course, you can zero it out if you want to. Because I don't have this whole thing is 430. Four. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. How many pounds of apples did she buy? If you cut 434 into groups, or $4.34, into groups of 28 cents, how many of those groups would they have? Where can I find the answer? I can find the answer right here. And that is going to be 10 plus 5 is 15. Plus five tenths. Fifteen and five tenths pounds. Fifteen and five tenths pounds. So as a reminder, when you are dividing a decimal by a decimal, you are going to want to, again, you don't have to, but it makes it just makes it easier. Multiply both numbers. Again, you can't just multiply one by ten until the decimal of the number that is doing the dividing is gone. Okay? Multiply both numbers by 10 until the decimal that's doing the dividing is gone. 438 divided by 28 is the same, will get you the same answer as 4 and 38 hundredths divided by 28 hundredths because we multiply both by 10. After you do that, you are going to want to put the number that is being divided inside the box, the number that is doing the dividing outside the box, and then multiply the number that is doing the dividing by either um, multiples of 10 or hundreds or ones, whatever makes the most sense for the problem you're doing until you can get as close as possible without going over. Then you put, that is called a partial area. 
right? You put that partial area part of the 